Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the Ubit Workshop. Now, very recently, Festool UK kindly sent to me uh, some bits and pieces which allow you to upgrade your CT extractor. Now, my CT extractor, this is the CT26. I've had this for about six years. It was part of the, my first Festool purchase when I bought my Capex saw and a few other bits and pieces. And it's done an excellent job. The only thing I've done to it is I have, a long time ago, added a second socket. Now, the kit that uh, Festool have sent to me uh, consists of a number of items. Uh, the, the first of which is this new hose garage, or whatever it should be called, uh, which one can fit on the top of the machine. Now, as far as I can see, the, the major difference is it now has the uh, T-lock uh, uh, attachment here, so one can then have a T-locked sustainer sitting on top. And it's got the, the usual green clips for, for holding the legacy sustainers and, and actually for securing uh, a regular sustainer a little more uh, firmly. Uh, and that just goes on with four screws. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, the other items they've sent, and uh, this is a completely new departure for me, are uh, the Bluetooth kit for a CT extractor. Uh, and that consists of a Bluetooth module, which in my case would re replace uh, the uh, extra socket I put in, but in a normal uh, uh, situation, it would just replace a blank, which is there. So that would go there. Uh, and along with it is a Bluetooth remote control. And this is something that would be fitted uh, to the action end of your hose, and there are clips available to do that, uh, so that whenever you wanted to start uh, the extractor off using Bluetooth, you could press this button. Now, the functionality of the Bluetooth startup for the extractor uh, goes beyond just that little button. And you can get a Bluetooth battery, and there are two. There's a 6.2 ampere hour and there's a 5.2 ampere hour battery. And these look very much like normal Festool batteries. Uh, they, these are part of the new Airstream range. And if you've got an Airstream charger, then one of these batteries will charge in a very short period of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the installation of these bits and pieces and uh, then demonstrate them to you. Now, for full compliance, I must tell you that uh, this kit, once it's fitted to my extractor, is going to stay fitted, um, and I get to keep the uh, battery as well. Now, that doesn't mean to say this is an advert for the kit. I'm going to go through and show you how to install it. I'm going to show you how it works. And if I see any obvious problems with it, I'll let you know. Um, and I hope that I'll be showing you in enough detail so that you can make up your mind. Now, this is my original hose garage on my CT. Uh, and uh, nowadays, if you buy a brand new machine, you will get one of the uh, newer hose garages, which I'm about to show you. And the way you fitted a sustainer was to get it locked in there. And then there were two clips, one on this side and one, one on the rear here. Now, of course, with the T-lock, the uh, then things will be quite different because there will be a T-lock just here. Uh, in order to remove the old garage, it's very, very simple. It's a question of undoing four screws. So that's the, the old one off. In order to fit the new one, it's just a very simple replacement job. On it goes. And then these long screws go in as before. Uh, make sure you put them in the correct holes because there are holes uh, in various places uh, at the front here for other accessories. And now I can put my sustainer, same one as before, on there and there it is held in place. And here's a, a sustainer which doesn't have the T-lock on uh, and that fits in. Legacy sustainer, and it works. Now, if I were a road warrior, uh, on the road all the time, taking my CT around with me, uh, and always using the top for sustainers, uh, then I would say that this is a good move. If you're like me in a static uh, workshop environment, uh, then 
maybe you might think twice about it. But I must say, uh, having that uh, T-lock there, if you've got sustainers on top, is going to be a really good idea. Now, in order to fit the Bluetooth uh, module to the CT, uh, you'll need to remove the two screws. They both uh, are five mil uh, hex screws here. If you're going to do anything to your CT, it must be absolutely disconnected from the supply. Pull the plug out and leave it dangling on the floor. Uh, remove those two. Uh, then you remove the plate. And if you look in here, you can now see there's uh, connectors for the main supply and there's some uh, smaller connectors for intelligence. Now, in the case of my extra socket, it was only these mains ones which were involved. Uh, and so that when that was plugged in, that happened very easily. But in the case of the Bluetooth accessory, it's these little ones here. And so we're going to make sure when we fit this that we push this in very gently, very carefully, making sure that uh, this socket lines up with the pins which are just inside there. Now I'm sure that Festel will tell you that you get a trained electrician to do this or get your dealer to do it for you. That's fine. Uh, and uh, I'm making this video just to help your dealer or your electrician uh, to see how easy it is to do. With the Bluetooth module, it's this little socket here which has to very carefully fit down over the pins which are just inside. And you line it up and just push gently. And that's it, fit it. We now return the two screws. Get our 5mm hex key back into play, and that's it, done. Now let's see how this works. I've got here my PSC420 uh, jigsaw, I'm going to connect the hose to it. Now rather than putting any old battery on, I'm going to put uh, one of the new Bluetooth batteries on, and it just slips on just as any other battery would do. I'm going to now press this button here. And when I start the tool, it's back to start. And then the extractor automatically switches off. So the tool and the extractor are now paired. Now, what I'm not sure about is what happens now if I remove that battery from there and put it on a different tool. Aha! So it works again. So therefore, our Bluetooth connection that we set up uh, is between the battery and the machine, obviously. Uh, I should have thought about that before. So I could swap this battery around from tool to tool. And that may be the case if you're only investing in one or two of these special batteries to start with, that you would be doing just that. Now, if you put the battery on charge, which I'll do now, and it's actually saying it's ready because it's a fully charged battery, fine, well, I'll take it off there. Now, it's my understanding that that process of charging the battery causes it to lose the Bluetooth association, which it has. So, in this case, you just press the button at the front there. Press the button on the tool and the association is remade. And I now take this from here, put it back in my jigsaw, So that connectivity is lost when the battery goes on the charger. Uh, now, what happens if you've got a different battery you want to associate? Well, you just grab that battery, put it on the tool, and go through that process as I did just then. Now let's look at the little remote control. Now, it's got a, a manual button on there, and uh, theoretically it should be paired already with the machine. Let's press the button. Press it again. And so uh, the two are paired. 
If they're not paired in the instruction manual, it tells you exactly how to repair it. It's a question of pressing uh, both buttons, the big button and the little green button here, uh, both at the same time for 10 seconds, uh, and then that re repairs it with the, the CT. Uh, but uh, out of the box it should, should work uh, straight away. Uh, this little button is associated with an app or some apps, plural, uh, which I understand Festival will be releasing later this year. Don't ask me what those apps will do. Maybe you can uh, be in Hong Kong and get your mobile phone out and start your extractor in Basingstoke. I'm really not sure, <laughs> but there we go. Uh, but the remote control can be fitted onto your hose and there are two of these little rubber uh, gadgets, one for a, a 27 millimeter hose and one I assume is for a 36 millimeter hose. And I'm just gonna push this on here. Right, so you can see how neatly I've managed to get that side in. I'm now going to push it round here. Now I've got that over there. It's a question of getting that to seat nicely in there. That's it. It's done. So now I've got my remote control on the hose. And you think, hmm, I can now do a little tidy up in the workshop. So rather than having to go back to the CT, and turning it into the manual on position each time. I just press the button. And there we go, nice clean lens. Now, as far as I know, this kit is only available for the CT range of extractors, but this is it. This is the CT version. It really does uh, seem to do the trick. Now, who will find this useful? Basically, anyone who wants to do workshop cleanup. I'm doing it frequently because I'm on camera all the time. Uh, and also anyone who's using a cordless tool and, and generating dust and you want to get your CT switched on and off. Uh, so all your TSCs, uh, your uh, HKSC, all, all those uh, range of tools and of course the new cordless sanders. So if you're using any of these cordless tools and you're creating dust then this seems like a very good idea. But it's up to you to decide. Go to your local dealer, uh, take a look at it yourself. Uh, go to a show. There are plenty of shows Festival put on around the world. Go to a show and see it demonstrated. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.